Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration of uh, time domain reflectometry, which also demonstrates how electrical waves can can reflect. Um, so I've got a uh, I've got a function generator here that's generating pulses, 10 nanosecond pulses every 100 nanoseconds or so. So we can see it here on the oscilloscope. You can see the pulse. Um, we have a piece of coax connected. We got the we go from the uh, pulse generator to channel one, the oscilloscope, and we've got a length of uh, RG58 connected to the T piece, which is currently properly terminated with a um, with a 50 ohm resistor. This is this is actually an old piece of Ethernet thin wire. So these are these are bits for my retro computing stuff. So. As we can see when it's all properly terminated, the pulse, we just see a clean pulse and then really nothing much following that. Now, if I pop the terminator off, instantly we can see we're now getting a reflection off the, the open end of the transmission line. So uh, the, uh, the pulse travels up the coax, hits the end and just bounces off. Another interesting thing, which you probably remember from doing the theory, is that if you short circuit a transmission line, now I'm going to try and do it one handed because I'm holding my phone with one hand and all this coax with the other. But if I just put the, I have a short circuited BNC connector here. If I connect it and make a good connection, you see the, the reflection actually comes back uh, inverted. So. Off a short, off a short circuited transmission line, the reflections, the wave when it hits the end, when, when the pulse hits the end, it'll come back reflected, inverted, and when it's open circuit, if I can get this off again, one-handed, there we go. It's it's the same way up as as we transmitted it. Um, but the the interesting thing about this is you can actually measure this. So imagine this piece of coax is buried in a wall somewhere, and uh, it's not working. It's broken, and so you, you do this, and you can find out exactly where the break in the transmission line is. So I've got the cursor set up. I turn this knob here until this vertical line. We've got the the left cursor set to the start of the the start of the pulse we're transmitting. And then if we set it here, so it's at the start of our reflected pulse, we discover that it's about 30 nanoseconds. Let's see if we can get that any better. That's probably, that's probably pretty much exactly the start of the pulse. So, well, let's call it 29.2 nanoseconds. Um, now, light travels at basically 0.3 meters per nanosecond, and in RG58, it was a velocity factor of about 0.6, so it, or about 0.66. So, if you get our calculator here, uh, so if we want the velocity factor of 0.66 times the, we go 0.3 meters is one light nanoseconds. And we have uh, 29.2 nanoseconds. That tells us the pulse travelled in the coax 5.78 meters. And of course, because of reflection, it's the time it took to go there and come back. So we have to halve that to find out where the open end of the transmission line is. And it tells us it's 2.89 meters down the coax and I can tell you now this is actually a, a, a that is a but that is pretty much spot on this is like supposed to be a three meter uh, patch cable RG58 patch cable so that's pretty much spot on to where we'd expect it to be from the amount of time it took so there you go time domain reflectometry um, so I hope you enjoyed that anyway